Yeah, and it's great to welcome back to the Harvey Norman Lounge best-selling author and naturopath, Lani Lopez. Morning, Lani. Good morning. So today we're looking at how to get a flourishing brain when you've got that brain fog. Ooh. What would you say is brain fog for starters? How would you sort of describe it? It's when you feel like you've got cotton wool in your brain and you can't think. So you might even be reading something and you've gone, oh, I've got to read it again and again and again. Or you're just not cognating or, or getting it. Or someone might be talking to you and then you kind of go in a little dream where you can't find your keys and you can't remember why you walked into the room. Yeah. And you've got to go back out. I think we can all, we're all very familiar with that, particularly in this place here, we're all very familiar with it. So what does it take to help our brains flourish? It's, um, well, I think there's four fundamental things. Exercise, Holly was doing a bit today. Then uh, we talk about nutrition, maybe there's some supplements to take and good sleep. Okay, sleep is so important for everything, isn't it? You cannot function without it. Yeah, so how does it affect our health if we've got that brain fog? Uh, well, I think it sort of works on really putting your mood down and we have to keep our mood lifted and if it's affecting your brain, you're getting brain fog, you're also losing your physical energy. Yeah. So if you don't have physical energy and you can't think, you're just sort of going down a downward spiral and we want to keep uplifted as much as possible. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Is there any particular foods that are good for yes, it? Yes, um, there was a study done on some prisoners where they had fish and they had omega-3 and they had less aggression, less depression, and um, they had better sort of IQ in terms of being able to do puzzles and things like that. So we should be putting more fish into our diet? Absolutely, three times a week. Really? Minimum. Three times a week? So yeah. that seems a lot. I don't think I would do that once a week. Well, uh, it depends maybe on once. how much meat you're eating. Too you know? much, too much, but it's so delicious. <laughs> uh, what about exercise? Can that actually help with regeneration of your brain and repair of it? Well, it's all about circulation and um, also inflammation. So if you're exercising, you're really training your brain to get the circulation going. You're helping with brain plasticity. Mm. So how our brain develops mental acuity and cognition. And it's just good all over for your endorphins too. So you're getting rid of all that yucky stress, which can affect your brain and cause brain fog as well. It's really fascinating how stress just deals to everything in your body, doesn't it? It does. So how do you go about managing that stress then, <laughs> apart from the exercise? Obviously, that's number okay, one. Okay, so exercise and sleep. So just, just say, you know, we've talked about sleep quite a bit, mm. so we'll move on. Um, the sort of foods that you can have, maybe adding some linseed and walnuts into your diet, Brussels sprouts, green leafy vegetables. I remember hearing once that walnuts are good for your brain because they look like a brain as well. That's how you remember that they're good for your brain. I know, I know. Um, there is a theory that goes along different sort of uh, foods looking like something. Why would you eat carrots then? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of something else, but let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about this green tea. Yes. Now, um, <laughs> so what have you actually bought and what, what sort of things did you just be taking? I, I use to help with my brain um, because I find that um, coffee and tea is brilliant and so is chocolate because it's got the caffeine and it makes your brain sort of go, but you have this terrible sort of and feel exhausted. Whereas if you're having green tea, and I use this one because it's got kawa kawa, which is a blood cleaner, so good for the brain, and it just tastes so good. So uh, green tea is really good because it's got the caffeine, but not the nasty sort of things that you that go along with you having bad adrenals. Um, but there are certain types of herbs that can help as well. What sort of things? Well, uh, my favourite is anything that heals the gut, the adrenals, and helps with circulation. So that's pine bark circulation, ginsengs for your adrenals, and cordyceps and pawpaw mm -hmm. for your gut. Even having pineapple juice is good for your gut. Too. Okay, and what about these ones you bought in the Res Energy? Yes, well, look, I probably couldn't live without them, actually. <laughs> um, I'm working so hard, and, and my daughter's 10, you know, and as a solo mum, you know, it gets pretty yeah. difficult. So I find that by taking one to three, depending on my workload, um, they help to support my fatigue and also combat that brain fog. And I developed it for that reason, because for a long time I was well, after having children, yeah. you know, I was going through that and I thought, well, why don't I just use this knowledge I've got and make this? Excellent. Our brain stamina, it's good for it. I'm still waiting to come out of that brain frog from having children. That's for sure. I think it's with us forever until they're, yep, with us forever. I promise it won't be if you do the right stuff. Okay. Well, Lani, thank you so much for coming in. You're always so helpful with giving us guides what we should be doing to get our bodies and, and our minds in tip-top shape. Yeah. And to find out more about how Lani can help you and to purchase any of her supplements, go to her website at lanilopez.com.